you can go ahead. Now I can start. Okay, great. Okay, okay, good. So, well, good morning and good afternoon for some, and welcome to our XG Launchpad webinar, where, where we're going to be talking to, do, uh, to you today about an exciting program that's designed to help high-tech companies explore and develop opportunities in the China market. My name is Peter Tenson from Global Tech IP. I'm calling in from Nanjing, China. I'm joined today by my colleagues, Christina Raiko in Moscow, Lin Huang in Wuhan, China, as well as our partner, um, another Christina, Christina Kolichia from Woodburn Accounting and Advisors, who with offices in Shanghai and Hong Kong, uh, but who's calling today from Luxembourg. So today is really going to be a preview of coming attractions where we'll explain the XG Launchpad program uh, the content, the stages we'll be going through during this program. And we'll also include a, um, this, this program will include a webinar series, uh, business plan development program, matchmaking, and finally a residential program in China for some, uh, which we have been designing with um, our program sponsors in Nanjing at the Xingang High Tech Industrial Park. Uh, so they're the sponsors of this program. And we'll say a few words about them as well. But first, let's uh, quickly review today's agenda. So we'll start with a, a quick overview of the program, which I'll deliver uh, to talk about our goals and the stages and the, a little bit more detail on the actual webinar uh, content. And then we'll be doing a quick introduction of ourselves and our, our sponsors in Nanjing. And then we'll be providing a, a quick a taste of, of the webinars that will be coming uh, with uh, uh, Christina uh, giving a, a, a short uh, presentation followed by myself. And then if we have time, we'll take, we'll take some questions. So we can go to the next slide, please. So why are we doing this? Well, first of all, China, while it's huge, has not been a very easy market for foreigners and especially high tech firms to crack. Uh, particularly over the last two years for obvious reasons. Um, but to be honest, many SMEs try and many give up. Of course, there are many reasons for this, uh, but I think it really boils down to a lack of preparation in most cases. Not understanding the business landscape, the market, the regulatory environment, et cetera, or having uh, taken insufficient time to plan around hiring, around operations, financing, IP protection, et cetera. And let's face it, it's very difficult to maintain the focus thousands of miles away when you have plenty of fires to tend to locally and problems to deal with in, you know, that are, are close to home. So many, many start and, and many uh, don't continue. So, um, and as many of you are aware, uh, I'm sure having probably had some exposure to China, doing business in China, while, they share, while we share many characteristics with any markets anywhere in the world, on the surface can be very different under the covers and present unique challenges, which sometimes requires a different mindset, a different strategy, uh, part, special partnerships and unique problem solving skills. So that's, that'll be part of the focus of this, this program. Generally success will require proper research, planning, partnering and patience which is what this, this program is all about. And we hope to take um, all of you and, and other companies that come forward on a journey, on a step-by-step -step journey over the next six months to first assess if China is the right move for you. Second, to think about uh, appropriate strategies, business models, business structures. Third, to develop a realistic and workable China business plan. Fourth, to develop a support network, find leads and cultivate partnerships. Fifth, to uh, come to China for an extended visit to deepen your understanding and extend your networks. Sixth, to develop a solid foundation, meaning a corporate structure, financial structure, a core team. And finally, seventh, to implement your business plan on the basis of that foundation. So we don't expect everyone to join us for this entire journey. And it will be, uh, we'd like, it would be up to each company to decide how far they want to come for this ride. Um, but, and we will also be giving an assessment about each company's viability as we see it uh, during the course of the program. But we do expect uh, some, of the, some of you will come along and, uh, for, the, for the entire ride. 
Um, just a word about the program name. XG stands for Shingang, which in the pinyin spelling is the name of abbreviation for our program sponsors, the Shingang uh, Nanjing Industrial Park. And we're um, hoping to attract some of you to land in their park and take advantage of some of the uh, policy supports that we'll be explaining later in the program. Um, so that's, uh, that's it on the program goals. We can go to the next slide and we'll go through a little bit more detail on the stages. So first of all, who is this for? So this is really suitable for CEOs, for founders, for heads of international strategies, uh, departments from startups or growth companies who are just looking to get a, get a deeper in insight into doing business in China, to validate their China market potential, to consider if they, if and how to set up a subsidiary or other corporate structures, uh, to explore what the financing and funding options might be, and to discover specific market opportunities and partnerships for themselves. Next slide. So the stages, uh, we have three main stages for this program. Uh, today we'll be focusing mainly on the first stage, which is a webinar series, which will be starting actually probably in November now, not October. Uh, so from November, mid-November to mid-December, we'll be taking five weeks. Uh, and that'll help to uh, assess the opportunities to understand the, uh, the high-tech innovation ecosystems in China, some of the key op opportunities, risks, uh, to help navigate some of the fast changing uh, business landscapes um, and common pitfalls in China and to develop a, uh, a reasonable go-to-market strategy. Uh, in January, for those that are, would like to continue, We'll then be looking at uh, doing a detailed uh, review of business plans for those who've uh, undertaken the, the, uh, the task of writing a business plan, which will be a voluntary activity during, this pro during the webinar program. And we'll help start with some matchmaking with uh, particular opportunities in China during that time. And then uh, in the, um, sometime in 2022, uh, we, we hope to bring companies over for a residential program that would last about five weeks. Um, and during that time, companies can uh, take the opportunity to set up their, their, their company and register uh, to talk in more depth with partners, to find their first leads, and to start implementing their, their first projects. We can go to the next slide. And this is just a little bit more of a detailed view of that same program. So today we're starting with this, with this uh, webinar. Uh, we'll have a formal launch of the program, a formal kickoff in mid-November, followed by a webinar, our first of all a webinar series, and then followed by four more webinar series happening about a week apart. The schedule is still being uh, confirmed in terms of exact dates, and we'll be asking you for some feedback on optimal times. Um, we'll then be, um, uh, we'll then have a monitoring uh, uh, program for those uh, to look at your business plan in December, for those who are interested, that will happen in parallel to some of the, uh, the final weeks of the uh, training program, the webinar program. Uh, in January, we'll be doing some evaluation of the business plans and selecting um, on some companies to who, who would be interested in uh, continuing for the next phase of the, of the program, which would start with some business matchmaking while we wait for things to open up. And once, once China opens up for travel, uh, currently it's, it's quite restrictive, but in, we're hoping in, by, by the uh, second quarter of 2022, things will start to open up. Then we'll be inviting those companies over for a residential program. Next slide, please. And this is just a, a little bit more on the uh, next five weeks and what we'll be uh, we're planning to cover. So in week one, we'll be looking more in more depth at the uh, China business environment, uh, understanding the, the overall landscape a little bit more about the, the cities and the uh, how to select the location, uh, talk a little bit more about the cultural language, business etiquette and mindset of doing business in China. And very importantly, the uh, political government and regulatory issues that one is likely to face. 
in the uh, second week, we'll be looking more in depth at how to assess market opportunities in China and considering some of the major markets in China, major, the major industry drivers, um, some, um, how to, how to uh, position your, your, your uh, product or service in the China market, how to assess the competition. In week three, we'll look a little bit more in depth with at your product and technologies and highlight some of the uh, directions in, in China's um, innovation ecosystem, how to take advantage of that, um, looking more in depth at um, uh, how to do R&D, production, and how to, assess, how to ensure quality control. Week four, we'll turn more to operational considerations uh, in covering finance, legal, HR. And in the final week, we'll be looking to bring that all together to help uh, put that into a market strategy for you. And then really thinking, kind of segueing into the, the business uh, plan development. Although each of these weeks will be hopefully contributing uh, to, to some of your thinking about your China business plan. Next slide, please. Also, we'll be developing a, um, a uh, platform, a special platform for this group. Uh, it's under development. As you can see, I am showing you the Chinese slide here, so that's not very helpful. Uh, but we'll have a group where we'll post um, information about the, the webinars, um, videos, um, additional information that might be of help, and also allow you guys to start to connect with each other and also to connect uh, to potential partners and uh, potential customers in China. Next slide. So just to uh, say a few words about, the, about uh, how to approach the China market. Uh, we'll go into more depth in, in our first week of, um, uh, of the webinar series on this, but just to, just to highlight a few things about uh, you know, dealing with China. For those of you who have not been to China, it is huge. Uh, so we're talking obviously about a huge population bigger than the combined populations of Europe and, and North America with the land mass bigger than the US. <clears throat> um, it's, a, it's a country now, as everyone will know by now, of, of rapidly rising incomes, um, increased consumer spending, and a, a business environment that's been steadily, uh, steadily uh, opening, although not with, without some, some you know, back and forth. Um, but there, there, it's a it's a, a country that's been open for becoming increasingly open for foreign business. Um, but again, understanding how to approach that market, how to how to get in, is very very important. And it's uh, important to note that it's very distinct from other Asian markets. So those of you who have dealt in other areas of Asia, it's quite it has quite different um, markets uh, dynamics and drivers. It's also important to. Uh, note that the market is, is very varied and it's rapidly changing. So it's being uh, changing, it's being, change is being driven through uh, technological change, which is driving through socioeconomic transformations as well. And the, there's also a, um, an uneven level of development across the country. So it's important to realize that the uh, development is really, um, is really different in different parts of the country and you'll, you'll uh, likely encounter high variations in, in GDP, education, consumer spending in different cities and different parts of China. <clears throat> so you can really think of the, uh, the China market really not as one unified market, but really more as a collection of sub-markets um, that are defined by different, demogra different demographics, uh, economic and uh, cultural characteristics. And really it's important to begin to understand the different Submarkets when you start to research and approach uh, approach China. Um, there's also with rising incomes a, a, a quickly growing demand uh, for foreign products and services, um, and that's being driven by a rapidly expanding middle class um, and also a high net worth class with high you know with rising in, uh, incomes, but also rising uh, aspirations. Um, and so we'll be looking um, a little bit more closely at the different regions and th where those, where the different markets uh, are for those high income and middle income people. Um, in particular, 
We are based in the what we call the YRD, the Yangtze River Delta region around Shanghai. Um, there's also the Greater Bay Area, which is based around Hong Kong and Shenzhen and Guangzhou. And then there's a, uh, the Beijing Tianjin corridor. So we'll be considering all those um, all those those areas plus other other parts of the country. Um, so yeah, so just just to bear in mind that chi China is a big market. It requires uh, a lot of a lot of research before you dive in. Okay, next. At the end of all this, we'll be looking to um, again build a China business plan. Now, these are some of the these are some of the uh, areas that you'd find in any business plan. Um, but we'll be focusing in particular on how to uh, orient your business plan to China. Uh, a business plan, of course, can be a, uh, a written document, but today, in most cases, people are opting more for for a uh, a slide deck, which is perfectly fine. Um, although it would be helpful for certain sections to actually be written out um, and something that you can go back and check and, uh, and verify where you can also have a closer look. So um, some of the key um, things to consider in, in a China business plan will be your, your corporate structure in China. How do you wanna structure yourself? We'll have a, a session on that. <clears throat> Understand your, your market and the market dynamics of your industry in China is very important. Um, and who's already there, what the competition is. Uh, understanding uh, in more detail what the production requirements might be if you're going to be doing production or product development in China. And then there's all host of um, things to consider for going to market. What are the business models you want to adapt? Um, how do you need to modify uh, your, your offer and also your product for that matter, localization? Um, and then developing your local management team <clears throat> and uh, your finances in uh, in China is also very important. A lot of unique considerations there, which um, Christina will be able to talk more about, especially with her accounting background. Next slide, please. Some of the research questions you'll be looking at during this during these sessions will be: What are your market segments, and what are the relative sizes? Are they accessible? Who's already in the market? What's their market share? Can we compete? Uh, what are the regulatory requirements and barriers? A very important consideration in China, particularly for high tech industries, particularly when we're talking about IT. <clears throat> so is the industry becoming more open or is it becoming more restrictive? Um, will the China market understand my, the offering that you're bringing to the table? The how, how does it need to be adjusted, promoted? And what are the routes to, China, to, to the market in China and what you need to adjust in your business plan and pricing models? Um, so these are just some of the things to, to, um, to be thinking about in the back of your mind. And again, we'll be going in a lot more depth on all these kind of questions. Next slide, please. At the end of all this, you'll, you'll, you'll want to do a market readiness uh, evaluation, which we'll be helping you with. And these are just some of the topics that we would expect to cover in that evaluation. So these are just things that that are, are good to keep in the back of your mind. And again, we'll be, these are getting more into some of the detailed nitty gritty that we'll be also covering through the course of the five weeks and beyond. Next slide, please. So now I'd like to turn things over to my colleague, Christina Ryko, who will be giving us a short introduction on your instructors for this program and uh, talking a little bit about our sponsors, the Shingang industrial park. Christina, over to you. Hi. Yeah. Uh, Christina here. Can you see me all well? Yep. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so yes, we have prepared quite a uh, plethora of uh, specialists in uh, China markets specifically for you. Uh, one of your instructors is uh, Christina Kalekalucha who is uh, one of the leading experts in corporate structures, inbound investment and accounting. So with all your questions, troubles and fears about uh, financial aspects of your um, new enterprises, considered enterprises in China, uh, you can come to Christina into um, very knowledgeable good hands. Uh, Peter Tenson, who just um, kicked off the session is our um, Global Tech IP China director. He runs a, a team of specialists 
in um, our offices in uh, Nanjing um, and Hangzhou. Uh, he has assisted a large number of uh, international companies coming to China with all manner of uh, issues and um, uh, defining strategies and um, uh, business, um, developing uh, business for and with them in partnership uh, format. Uh, Christina Raiko is another Christina myself. Some of you know me already. Um, I am a, a technology scout and strategist. So my job is to find the leading tech wherever they come from and uh, uh, offer uh, the necessary support to prepare you, take you by the hand, uh, prepare you for a uh, Chinese market, make sure that your technology is validated, that your IP is protected, that your business strategy is solid. And when you're ready and only then to jump over and land in the uh, uh, soft environment in which our team in China uh, can then work with you on uh, the actual business um, uh, lending in that environment. And that is where um, the uh, instructor, the Chinese instructor, Ling Huan, our uh, leading uh, management expert comes in. So she is a, a specialist in technology transfer in innovation, and uh, she is a brilliant communicator with uh, a, a various um, uh, government agencies in China. So she is your go-to for organizing any um, uh, processes and um, uh, strategies on the ground. So that's the team uh, at this stage, but of course we will bring you more instructors and mentors as per your needs, because as you will see later, the program will very much be tailored to your needs as well. And uh, we will bring those specialists um, when we know that you require specific attention in certain areas. Next slide, please. So a little bit about our company, what do we do? We are a technology transfer, uh, commercialization and investment company. Uh, we're supporting entrepreneurial innovation, outstanding technological achievements in various sectors. We work very closely with universities, governments, research organizations, VCs in uh, technology area. And our largest number of um, clients, customers at the moment come from the UK. Uh, the US and uh, Europe, but we've, we're also opening uh, new markets in um, Russia and India, and there's no shortage of excellent solutions on the market today. Uh, we also work closely with a multitude of partner organizations, and um, uh, 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 Christina's organization that um, uh, works specifically in the financial sector is a brilliant example of uh, such a partnership and um, uh, really collaborate around the world um, and, and identify, find technology companies, validate and ultimately bring them to uh, China market um, uh, across all number of uh, industries and sectors. Next slide, please. Yeah, so what will we uh, work on and what will we provide you from our team's side. Uh, we'll work with you closely to uh, produce a roadmap specific to you. We'll identify the best format in which to establish your new business in China. We'll do an in-depth analysis of the market with you, picking up from what you already know. We will offer you the whole range of opportunities in terms of uh, financing your operations, making sure that you have locations for your offices, housing, uh, setting up your company um, uh, at the very basic levels, uh, engaging with your first potential partners and selecting well. Uh, we'll look specifically 
for um, funding options from the government um, uh, agencies, um, as well as on the private um, uh, angel and VC uh, markets. We will look at uh, opportunities to set you and your team up best in that environment. Obviously, right now, travel to China is very difficult, but that doesn't mean that it's impossible. So we are helping you with all manner of um, uh, arrangements there as well. And uh, with um, uh, Lynn and uh, her, her team's um, uh, support, you'll be able to communicate with the government directly, uh, looking at opportunities there for uh, contracts and various um, types of support. And uh, we'll develop plans for um, accessing market and actually accessing your um, new customers in China together. Next slide, please. Yeah, so um, as uh, we mentioned earlier, our headquarters are located in the city of Nanjing in, the Ch in China's Silicon Valley, uh, River Yangtze uh, Delta. And uh, with uh, the local policies in mind, we'll develop a specific uh, policies guide for your needs and look at um, the variety of opportunities that the city offers. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> here you see a quick example of um, our uh, customized tailored guides for you. Uh, this would include uh, specific information designed for uh, your team, your company, as to uh, how to kick off uh, initial operations, but also uh, give you a leg up and will often uh, stand in as your external team that will be the operational basis for your business, at least initially, until we can pass the proverbial keys to you and you can come uh, to China and manage, uh, manage your uh, new um, enterprise from, from China's soil. Okay. Next slide, please. This is just uh, a number of um, services uh, tailored to your business that we are offering as part of the soft lending process for your uh, company. Don't need to go through all the details. You can scan through that and see that uh, for yourself. Uh, I will point out, however, that since we have uh, clients from all around the world, the tailored approach is extremely important um, in, in this um, uh, instance. And our team uh, speaks half a dozen languages between us. So don't worry, we will find a way to communicate at the pace and format that's most applicable and comfortable of, for you um, individually. Okay, next slide. Um, so I will pass on to uh, Lin Huang, my uh, um, colleague in uh, Wuhan, who will tell you more about the uh, specific location, specific technology park, the district of Xingang that Peter introduced earlier. Lin, please. Hi everyone, this is Lin. I'm very delighted to introduce you all about our city of Nanjing and our Xingang Park. So here, the first slide is just a very snap, is a snapshot of all kinds of uh, index about the city. I'm not going to go through all the details, but you can see easily that um, um, our city, Nanjing, ranks number five. Uh, by the high quality development of Chinese cities of the, by the Economic Research Institution. Actually, Nanjing City is the capital of Jiangsu Province. Well, Jiangsu Province ra ranked number two in its GDP development across all, Jiang all China's provinces. And it's also a city full of uh, new opportunities and, um, uh, and the business rankings by the CBN weekly is also high. It's like, like number eight in China. Apart from some business index 
you also see that the nature index of the city actually ranked uh, number 12 across China. So um, it has a great favorable and favorable natural environment in this city. And also it's ranked very high by the, um, the World Intellectual Property Organizations on its innovation index. Uh, next slide, please. And the next is about our park, actually Xingang Park. It's the, it's located in the big in industrial and development zone called NETDZ. NETDZ actually is short for Nanjing Economic Technology Development Zone. It was one of the first batches of um, Chinese development zones in the early in, in 1990s. And um, um, it has 216 square kilometers of air development areas and ranked number four in all kinds of development zones in China. And um, it also have a very big national level of comprehensive bonded zone in Nanjing with the world class electrical optical display industrial base. And because it's located as the lower Yangtze River Delta, it's naturally become a, um, a logistical hub for sea and um, all kinds of uh, other methods of transportation. It's also very close to Shanghai uh, as the lower Yangtze River Delta cluster. I think by, by fast trains, only an hour and 20 minutes to go to Shanghai. And one, one number to note is that its gross industrial output value uh, last year has achieved um, 327 billion yuan. So it's actually a very big industrial and development zone, economic development zone here in China. And there is a um, 73 Fortune 500 um, companies here in this park, including Siemens, LG, GSK, etc. So you can see a big industrial basis and uh, infrastructure as well as great traction here. Next slide, please. Next, I'm actually going to introduce you about some um, its favorite industries. They focus here to develop, including the photoelectric display, as I already mentioned. It has a world-class photoelectric uh, industrial base here, and also is focused on the high-end equipments with um, biomedicine, new energy automobile, and also it has a China a top tier AI value here for artificial intelligence technologies. So because of the limitation of time, I'm only going to brief you about its major industries as listed here and its geographic, geographic location and about its um, also the access to the talent pool. This um, Xingang Park is very next to the science, Shenyin Science City. Well, it has most of the research institution and the university intensity in Nanjing city and even in China. So it's very easy to find all kinds of uh, technology talents you want. So I think uh, my part is just about this uh, for today. And we are very glad to welcome you all to join our program and we'll be more than happy to help you with all you needed to make success here. Thank you. Okay. So I have to turn to Peter, yeah. I just want to add one word before we turn over to turn it over to Christina. Uh, I just want to say that we are the um, Xingang Park has uh, been very gracious in in providing the support for this program, and they'll be the ones hosting the the uh, residential program as well, and providing uh, support and subsidies for people who want to travel to China and stay here. So that's that's uh, all very good. So we're promoting them. I was, I just want to focus say though that we will also be looking at other districts in Nanjing and other cities in, in the region and also nationally. So uh, depending on what your solution is, we'll, we'll you know, the, the web, the, the, the net will be cast wider, um, but uh, obviously as our uh, sponsors, we're focusing on them as the, uh, the first point of entry. Um, that's all I wanna say, thank you. Over to you, Christina. Thanks, Peter. Um, hi, everybody. So everybody who's joined us live, thank you for joining us live. And those who will be watching this on replay, 
Um, Peter and I are finishing off these, this introduction session with just a sample of the type of education you will get in the five week webinar series. Um, we were really thinking about what to talk about in this sample version. Um, again, we're not gonna give you a full display about all the various topics that Peter was mentioning. This is just really a, a touch on the type of education you would be getting on doing business in, doing business in China. So as most people are looking to sell into the Chinese market, particularly in the high tech sector, my part of the presentation will be on exporting to China. Um, and then Peter will be talking a lot about the cultural bridge um, that needs to be built between China and your own home jurisdiction. So kind of the West and the East meeting together um, and how that communication arises and the difficulties that might come from it. So to start off today's presentation, I just briefly introduce myself. Um, I'm the head of business advisory council advisors. I'm a leading compound investment to China, which just basically means are foreign investors that are looking to establish their businesses in China. I've got 17 years of on the ground experience in corporate services and corporate compliance. What that basically means is I help you to survive in China with your companies. Um, it's how to protect your business, how to protect you as an entrepreneur. What do you need to do to make sure that your company remains in good standing within um, the Chinese market? And we're gonna start off with the five tips today. So these are five tips on what I think is the foundation you need to create when you're thinking about exporting to the Chinese market. So tip number one is saving your brand. How much is your brand worth to you? For all of you that are watching today live and might be watching on replay, my assumption is, is that you already have your own company in your home jurisdiction. You've already created a brand name around your products. And the big question is, is how much is that brand worth to you? Now, my experience is the following. People do not take trademark registrations or patent registrations seriously. For some reason, they put this at the bottom of their priority list. And because it's an administrative activity, nobody gets it done. And like me, I'm gonna use myself as an example. I went into the Chinese market in 2003, never thought about registering my brand name, never thinking about actually getting that done. Didn't even occur to me, even though I was advising my clients to do it. And lo and behold, five years later, a Chinese IP squatter registered my brand name. And I had to make a decision at that point about what to do. It was either rebrand, purchase, my brand from them because ultimately, and this would have been a third option, but I didn't have that chance, is to choose that they were actually an IP squatter and show proof that they were doing it in bad faith. But because this was an individual that had actually just seen my marketing here and there and randomly tried to register my brand, made, brand name and succeeded, I had only the two options left over, which was change or buy. And when you never know what that price might be to buy, and you might not be cash rich, your only alternative is to rebrand. And that's what we did. We went through a six month period of rebranding. And what does that actually mean? It actually means that I spent six months not focusing on scaling up the business, not focusing on growing my clientele, but focusing on doing an administrative me measure, which was rebrand, right? So my question to all of you is, how much is your brand worth to you? And just remember that registering your brand, I get it. It's an administrative me measure. Um, and it always, again, is put on the bottom of the priority list, but it is an easy thing to do. You choose what your brand assets are going to be in China. Ultimately, what are you going to use? What do you want to register? Do a trademark search to see the availability. Choose an entity that's going to own that those, those trademarks, choose the classes and subclasses of the goods and services that you wanna register in. And then you just go through the process of registering it. And again, with patents, it's gonna be a slightly more complex process. But today I'm just touching on trademarks. And again, this is the type of education you'll be getting during the five week program on what brand assets will you be using? 
we need to evaluate that. What classes and subclasses should we be going into? And the concept in China is a first of all concept. So the sooner that you get that done, the better, and it's something that's crossed off your checklist. The next tip I have is data. Do you have any? Um, Peter was mentioning this in his intro about, you know, is there even a market potential for you, right? The goal of this program is to bring you on a journey. And it could very well be that for your company and your products, it might be too early or it might be too late. So the question will then be, is it worthwhile to continue that investment and to continue with the potential opportunity that exists in China? But how can you make those decisions if you don't have data at your fingertips? You have to go through a process of data mining, right? What is your market segmentation? Have you done product testing? Is the product suitable for the Chinese market? Or do you have to tweak the product to fit the market? Have you done advertising testing? Because it's all good and well to sell your products, but you know, how are you gonna market it? Um, is there brand awareness? Do have people ever heard of you? Um, have you researched your competitors? Have you done a price benchmarking? The, these are all the types of data mining and research that have to happen prior to sitting down and taking a pen and paper to write your business plan. You need to know what the market potential is. You have to evaluate the opportunity and to what extent is there an opportunity? Because that then leads on to the phased approach you might have for market entry. All right. So data is critical. And uh, for me, I actually don't necessarily meet with companies that don't already have data at their fingertips to prove to me that China is the right market for them. If you're not at that stage, it means that there's still a lot of homework that you still need to do in order to understand the market. And again, there's a variety of ways to go about this. So historically, before COVID, many people would travel to China and do face-to-face -face meetings, walk around in the various cities to really understand what the market potential is. Right now with COVID and the border control regulations, it's impossible, not impossible, I don't wanna say it's impossible, but in my mindset, it is impossible to really get through those borders. Hopefully by early next year, that will open up, but you have to make sure that you change your mindset to think that you have to be physically on the ground to push things forward. There are companies out there that can find, do this data mining, that can do this research for you, who can uh, collect all the numbers and information for you to make that evaluation. You don't physically have to be on the ground. And if you feel that China is a market of great potential for you, then don't waste time waiting until you can be on the ground. Take that opportunity now to use and build an ecosystem of companies and people that can really help you who are already on the ground to do this work for you. And that leads me on to building your ecosystem. And that's, I think, also the whole point of this program um, that Peter is developing with, with the XG Launchpad is to help you create your ecosystem. Let's face it. Even as a Westerner that's lived for 17 years in Shanghai, I'm not a Chinese expert. And I will never tell people I am because I'm not Chinese. And I will never truly understand the culture, the dynamic, but I have built over 17 years an ecosystem of lawyers, of partners, of headhunters. I mean, the whole shebang of service providers that can help me make sure I remain in compliance, but more importantly, that can help me scale up my business at a speed that helps you not hit road obstacles, right? We, know, we don't wanna take five steps forward to then take two steps back because we've hit a roadblock, right? So building your ecosystem is vital and you'll meet the instructors, you'll meet the mentors in this program that will help you build a knowledge level on how to do business in China, how to make decisions and to actually push those decisions when the time comes, all right? Don't underestimate the knowledge base you need to create because knowledge for me is always power, but it's also the leverage you will have over negotiations. 
And the idea is, is that you're going to meet mentors, you're going to meet people that have lived for a long time in China, that can give you this insight, hold your hand and bring you to that stage of scaling up. How to meet people? Well, one is this XG Launchpad, but if you want to start before that, just to get informational uh, data, you know, you can subscribe to law firm website newsletters, corporate service providers like myself, chambers of commerce. Um, I'm sure in your own country you might have a China country association where you can gain insight into um, and build like a basic knowledge level on how to do business in China, right? Um, to do business in China requires a lot of reading and you have to be updated consistent, consistently on what is going there, what is going on there. Virtual trade shows, I know they're not the best. I'm the first to admit it, but you know, it's still available, okay? Um, don't underestimate these virtual trade shows. Don't un underestimate meeting partners via Zoom or Microsoft Teams, right? LinkedIn is a great resource, although I read an article yesterday over the weekend that LinkedIn will be exiting the Chinese market. Um, I'm curious to see when that will happen. Um, and if you're not on WeChat yet, you got to get connected to WeChat. Um, that will be a great way to start building the ecosystem and collecting, collecting contacts, names, etc. Tip number four is vet your partners. All right, so how to find partners? Well, in the XG Launchpad, the advantage for you guys will be that you will be introduced to numerous partners by joining the program. Alternatively, you have to go through the tedious tasks of doing this on your own, whether it's searching online, using Tmall um, B2D, uh, B2D, using matchmaking companies, which trust me, I've, I've met a lot of those, it's not always perfect, or building a reputation. In China now, it's gotten to a point, in my opinion, where uh, the Chinese are picky about who they want to work with. It's no longer the ease of they will work with any foreign company. It's they will pick and choose who they want to represent and support. And so, you know, you have to start building a reputation, start doing some marketing initiatives to build that name out. The advantage of the XG Launchpad, however, is that you are being introduced to that environment, to those people in the high tech sector straight away. Um, and I wouldn't underestimate that type of um, uh, advantage of joining, of joining the program. Do your due diligence. And again, this is something that the XG Launchpad will do on your behalf because the vetting has already happened. But alternatively, from your desk at home, you would have to do due diligence on your partners, or at least I would hope that you do, right? There, like any other jurisdiction or in the world, are people out there who will cheat you and who will say what they are not, right? Um, and going through this due diligence can be tricky because of language issues, the fact that, you know, you use Google search in China, you use Bing. Um, nowadays, people don't have fixed phone lines. They have WeChat. And if you don't have the WeChat ID, you can't connect. But it's really important to evaluate your partners, understand who you're going to be working with, do your due diligence, ask for references, do background checks if you have the ability to know what's behind them. And then tip number five is to design your China business model. And I know that is an extremely sexy idea to think that you will have a subsidiary in China. But if that doesn't fit the model that you're creating, don't ever feel that you are forced to set up companies. You need to start China off in a phased approach. And that could very well be that you use a distributor first, you use third-party manufacturing. And as you're scaling up, you can then think about having your own people on the ground, setting up your own company, but it's not something that you necessarily have to do from day one. Like I said, the key is creating a phased approach to the Chinese market in terms of how you're going to set up your operations. And I've listed here on this slide are basically ideas of how you can create your business in China by not establishing an entity, but by using third parties that are on the ground. Then you can go ahead and set up an entity. And there's a whole wide variety of what you can do, whether it's a joint venture, whether it's your own 100% own entity, you have options. And the goal is that, or uh, let me put it another way, 
Um, I've never met a company that has the same phased approach or that has the same way of entering. Um, could be from a blueprint perspective that it's similar, but everybody will do things in their own way based on their product and based on their goals and, uh, and what they wanna achieve in the market. So that's all for my presentation. And like I said, this is a little bit of what you will learn in the program series. Um, this is a very brief touch on, on that. Uh, Peter, I will hand it back to you. Um, for your for your side. Yeah, I think we're, uh, yes, we're actually we're cutting on to 50 after the hour and I did want to leave some time for Q&A. So rather than launching into the discussion on mindsets, um, I think I'll save that for one of our um, upcoming uh, lectures. Okay. I think and, if, uh, if, if the audience, if the people who are joining live or watching this on replay would like a copy of these slides, you can email us. Um, I, uh, I'm gonna, uh, Christina, I'll put your email address again, uh, globaltechip.com, or it's a bit confusing when there's two Christinas with a K, but I'll just do that <laughs> again. Um, so there's Christina at Global Tech IP, Christina at WoodburnGlobal.com, and you can reach us if you want a copy of the slides, copy us both in so that we're aware, and, um, and, uh, and then we can take it from there. I mean, so far there have been no questions that have actually popped in. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I, if if that's the case, well, well I, wanted, I did want to say that um, uh, we will be sending out information about the application process. There will be a, a short application and and a, a set of uh, questions that we'll have for you uh, about your business and your aspirations in China. So that will be sent out <clears throat> as uh, and and we'll have a, a talk about how to um, uh, we'll and we'll follow up with with. Um, uh, kind of the process, uh, how to join, how to um, join the, the program. So, and then we'd be, we'll uh, most likely contact each one of you individually, of uh, those of you who decide to join, just to have a quick chat before we do get started in mid-November. So we still have about a month ahead of us. So are there, uh, if there, are there no questions? We can, we can end it here, I think, yeah. Uh, well, nothing's Any popped questions? in. Um, if you do have questions, you can write them into the chat box, but so far nothing has popped in. Um, if anybody has, I think maybe if anyone has questions about the actual program specifically. Um, maybe raise your hand or. Yeah. Well, I think, I think maybe I can ask a couple of questions just being as an instructor um, of questions that might people might be asking. Um, so I think, I think just firstly, you know, um, how, how will it physically work in terms of communication with the instructors or with Global Tech IP in terms of moving forward? Right, so I think for the next uh, couple of weeks, we'll just be in touch on, uh, with emails and we'll send out an email questionnaire and to those who are interested and, um, and a, a short survey, as I said. Um, once we get going, though, we'll be uh, we'll be implementing a uh, a site, a, a platform, an online platform, uh, through which they will be able to continue to con their communication with the instructors and with one another, and with, as I said, potential partners and and maybe customers. And I think always a big question is cost. What what is the cost impact at all for for any of these? Um, directors, CEOs for the companies themselves that would join the program. Sure. So the the cost of the webinar is free, so that's that's a plus. Uh, it, we're being, as I said, we're being sponsored by our uh, by the Xingang Industrial Park. Uh, the the there'll be no cost really for the uh, residential program other than your own travel to and from. So those costs will you'll be borne by yourself, but the uh, the cost of actually staying in China during that period of time, uh, at least for the for the rooms for the housing and as well as a an office space a desk space will be provided uh, for you. Uh, and uh, in between, um, we will provide some free mentoring. But if they once we get to a certain a, a certain level of um, of um, discussion, we will then turn that over and, and turn that, uh, we may ask for some, uh, some consulting money there, but that's, but most of the initial mentoring uh, and discussions about your plans, your business plan and initial matchmaking 
they'll also be for free. I think there was a question from you. Yeah, there's there? a question from Kirill who's asking to you, Peter, you said about technology driven socioeconomic transformation. Does China currently stress on the market and destabilization resisting the Western influence? Does it uh, stress on the, say again? On the market and destabilization from the Western influence. influence. So I think we're talking a little bit about decoupling. Uh, yes, I mean, there's, there's certainly a movement of foot um, on both sides, you know, the Pacific, <laughs> mainly driven by the US and uh, its allies and, uh, and, and China for some, some level of, of uh, decoupling um, on, on different levels. Um, but um, I mean, China's still very interested in um, commercial engagement with the West. Um, they are, there, there's growing concern about uh, the influence, Western influences, I suppose, um, coming in culturally and other in, through, through various channels. Um, but in terms of the um, uh, decoupling, I think that's been overhyped a little bit. Um, I, the, the, the major economies are extremely entwined currently, and um, it will take a long time for them to, them to get unentwined. So um, I wouldn't expect that to happen over the next you know, commercial uh, decoupling to happen uh, for a while. It, it, it'll, be a pro, it'll be a long process. There'll be some backwards and forwards, but I think the two economies have too much to lose uh, by separating to, to want to fully separate. Of course, China is also looking in its own backyard and uh, looking to um, increase its engagement in areas like Russia, which I believe Kirill is from, and uh, throughout the, you know, the Belt and Road um, uh, countries. Uh, I'll just add to that, that uh, in our specific um, uh, sectors of industry we're looking at, we haven't really noticed much of um, that decoupling. Uh, China is very enthusiastic about uh, bringing in technology companies, especially in this very frustrating um, uh, COVID times, uh, but also um, looking with <laughs> With some level of suspicion and healthy competition at India next door um, and this um, uh, these links that have been built already between China and West indeed are solid uh, in both uh, academic and um, deployment uh, aspects of technology development. Carol I hope your answer was I hope we answered your question. Um, Thank you very much. Yes. Can I ask by voice about, uh, uh, I have a question to you, Christine. Uh, uh, so that uh, question is about the service, like it, does it include the research and deep analysis of a product that comes into Chinese market? For example, if, uh, if we say about HR uh, in the China is uh, really different with uh, this social economic um, I'll say awareness, and uh, for example, if we can say that product has some coefficients of ROI efficiency for uh, European companies, it is so much different for China. So uh, this is mostly about finance, and I heard that you are mostly connected with, with finance. So does the service includes the um, transformation of product and deep analysis of it? That's a question actually for Peter in terms of the program with the uh, uh, with the part. Yeah, no, I mean, um, we, again, we'll we'll take a, a look at your your business plan. So from that level, we can have an initial discussion. But obviously, any in depth research that needs to be done um, for your product localization, for you know your 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 specific financial situation would then be something that we could engage with you on uh, ourselves and, and uh, Christina, depending on the, uh, on, on the requirements. Um, but that would be on a, um, uh, a separate basis. You know, we'd have to dis discuss how we would, uh, we'd, we'd, we'd um, develop a, an engagement plan with you and uh, there'd be some costs associated with that. But for the initial, again, initial survey, initial look at your, your plans, an initial matchmaking that would be included as part of the program. Uh, is that answer your question? Um, is that Kirill? Yes, thank you. Okay. Great, I think we can leave it there because we've hit the 
the 7 p.m. mark in China. Um, Peter, is that okay for you? And then we can uh, no, no, bring it no. off offline if necessary. Sure, sure. Okay. We'll be looking forward to continuing the conversations with everybody. Thank you very super, much for, super. for attending today. Yeah. So I think uh, Peter and Christina um, will be reaching out to each of the attendees as well as to each of the registrants um, separately. And, uh, and again, if you'd like copies of the presentations, just email Christina and myself and we can get those to you. All right. Brilliant. Thank you so, so much, everybody. Thank you for joining us today and uh, have a great start to, your, to the rest of the week. <laughs> thank you. Goodbye. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.